far she blows. Only in this case, the traditional cry for sighting a whale probably comes out, Allí esta. This isn't a scene from Moby Dick, but one of the world's busiest fishing banks off the coast of Peru. The waters team with an abundance of sea life found nowhere else in the world, from the tiny anchovy to the largest inhabitants of the ocean, tuna, bonito, swordfish, and the mighty whale. Modern whaling, with the help of high-powered harpoons, is not nearly as difficult or dangerous as it used to be. But any time fishermen capture a mammal weighing up to 60 tons, the watchword is, handle with care. The reason for Peru's extraordinary marine resource is a mysterious ocean current that flows along the entire coastline. Known as the Humboldt Current, it flows northward bringing cold, mineral-rich waters from the depths of the sea. The splendid natural port of Chimbote is particularly important to the fishing industry. Peruvians have fished these waters since prehistoric times. The fish decorating these bowls were probably drawn more than 2,500 years ago. Sometimes the fish motifs were purely decorative, but most often they served a practical purpose. This is a stirrup spout vessel in the shape of a fish. An ancient Peruvian housewife might have used it as a water pitcher. Even in early times, Peruvians recognized the many varieties of fish in their waters. You can see that no two fish on this pot are exactly alike. Occasionally, the fish represented were of the supernatural variety. This vessel depicts a fish demon, the killer whale. And this one is probably the important god Ayapec, portrayed as a crab demon catching a fish demon. Net fishing has been practiced on the coast of Peru for at least 4,500 years. The ancient potters frequently portray a swimming fisherman returning with fish and shellfish in his net. Scholars believe that all the figures may refer to one individual of such strength and endurance that he became legendary. Scenes of fish and fishing occur in all periods of Peruvian pottery before the Spanish conquest, strong evidence of the importance of the sea to life in ancient Peru. This fragile little boat, made of reed balsa, is known as a caballito. It can hold one, or at most, two men. Since the dawn of time, Peruvian fishermen have ventured out in balsas to bring home a day's supply of fish for their families. And boats, just like this one, can be seen in the waters today. But in modern Peru, fishing has changed dramatically. It is no longer simply the means to provide family food supplies. It has grown to be one of the nation's largest and most important industries. This growth has stimulated other industries, such as shipbuilding, because bigger and more seaworthy ships are needed. The tiny reed balsas have been transformed to large, sturdy boats that can go hundreds of miles to sea and hold hundreds of tons of fish. A typical early morning in the port of Chimbote may find as many as 300 fishing boats setting out to sea. The fleet has increased greatly in just a few years, and it continues to expand. The fish run early, so the fishermen have to get an early start, and that means a seagoing breakfast. But even while some crew members eat, others are constantly on the lookout for fish.
This is Luis Barrera, captain of one of the boats. When the catch is difficult to find, Captain Barrera is glad to have a modern kind of help, eyes in the sky. The airplane flies ahead of the fleet, looking for a school of the fish that has meant so much for Peru, the little anchovy, a tiny silver treasure from the sea. Today, the fleet doesn't have long to wait. The pilot sights the quarry and radios its position to the boats below. The fleet hurries to the catch as quickly as it can. The huge net goes out. This is a purse seine, which works on the same principle as a woman's drawstring purse. One end of the net is attached to a buoy, and the boat moves in a great oval around the school of fish, paying out the net until it comes full circle back to the buoy again. With the fish inside the circle, the net is drawn closed. feathered fishermen who drop in for a free lunch. Now the hard work begins, hauling in the laden net. The slack is taken up carefully, gradually, until the net area is small and the fish are reached. It looks like a good day. Captain Barrera estimates this one haul at close to 70 tons. Anchovies are sometimes prepared as delicacies, but here in Peru, their teeming abundance permits them to be harvested almost as grain is harvested, and for similar purposes, as we shall see. The little boat seems to be literally alive with them. Even Captain Barrera's estimate turns out to be low because this haul totals 120 tons. At one ounce per fish, that means almost four million anchovies, enough for a very large party. Toward sunset, with the catch safely aboard, the fleet heads for home. And what a catch it is. Hundreds of little fishing boats, each one laden with its hundred tons of anchovies. The boats have radioed news of their catch back to the home port of Chimbote. In port, dock hands are ready to help unload the cargoes. The fish are mixed with water so they can be unloaded by powerful suction pumps.
Finally, the anchovies are delivered to modern processing plants. There, they are converted to fish meal by heat in long drying tunnels. Captain Barrera and hundreds of other captains like him are part of what has become one of the biggest industries in Peru, the manufacture of fish meal to be used as cattle feed and fertilizer. The extraordinary growth of this new industry was the result of the initiative of Peruvian businessmen. Oil was a key to expansion. Chimbote's fleet, the reduction plants, the drying furnaces, and the spotting airplane all had to have a dependable supply of fuels and lubricants. The Peruvian affiliate of the Standard Oil Company, New Jersey, built the necessary facilities. Included was a bulk storage plant, dock facilities, and equipment for fueling from tankers offshore. The ability and readiness to invest in economic development, even when it involves risks, is just one of many examples how international business promotes progress and strengthens the free world. Today, ships from all over the world come to Chimbote for their cargoes of fish meal. More than a million metric tons are being produced annually for export to Europe, Canada, and the United States. By 1963, fish meal had become first in Peru's source of foreign exchange. In addition, Peruvian agriculture has become a market for its own fish meal industry. Fish meal supplies farmers all over the world with an inexpensive high protein feed for their livestock. So here in Peru, a little fishing village has grown into a thriving community. An opportunity has matured into an important industry. An entire nation benefits because oil has helped it mine its treasure from the sea. <laughs> 